welcome to the heart of the Midwest. Today we're in central Illinois and we're talking all about corn harvest. We're at our buddy's family farm here and we're about to go get inside the combine, talk about how it works, where the end product winds up, and a lot more. I'm Callie with Ag Aviation Adventures. Tyson is behind the camera today. Welcome to Frontier Farm. All right, we are down here in the field, in the combine. This is Travis Herman. He is a seventh generation farmer here in Illinois. He also is a firefighter, an ag pilot, and owner operator of an ag aviation operation and farmer. I don't know how he sleeps. I don't think he does. Um, but we're super grateful to be here with him today and for him to take time out of his busy schedule to meet with us for this video. Now, this is full on harvest, so we're in the full swing of things here. That's right. We're right in the middle of harvest and uh, trying to keep all the wheels turned as, as much as we can. My brother and I are seventh generation farmers. Largely, we're just a corn and soybean operation in central Illinois. What's the end result of some of your corn and soybeans? On the corn side, we'll process some for ethanol. We'll also process some for high fructose corn syrup and other food grade products. And then also some uh, ingredients such as lysine. It really is amazing when you start to look into it where all the corn goes. It's in everything from toothpaste to tires to uh, what you use to cook dinner to what you put in your vehicles to power them. I would say here, most of it goes to food grade corn products such as corn syrup and uh, to ethanol as well. Let's walk through the process of corn. So it starts in the spring when you guys plant. What's that look like for you? Yeah, so in the spring when it warms up, uh, we wait for the soil temperature to get to a certain, a certain temperature, somewhere around the 50 degree mark, and uh, usually start planting corn and soybeans very close together anymore. Uh, we're running three planters, and the quicker that we can get the crop in the ground, the more growing days that they have available in the season. So after you plant, I know there's, this is a very short and condensed version, but crop is in the ground, then at that point you're taking care of it to keep it as healthy as possible. That's correct. So with our planters, we give it a little shot of uh, fertilizer to get out of the ground as quick as that we can and also to get it up to canopy as quick as we can to keep the sunlight off the ground. So we're also protecting at that time, we're protecting it from weeds. So we'll be spraying, spraying it to keep the weeds out and also giving it some, some fertilizer. We do another pass of fertilizer only in the summer and then that's in, in the June time frame. After we're spraying for weeds and giving some fertilizer to the corn, uh, we'll be on to our aerial season for fungicide in the first part of July. And that's actually how we got connected with you. Tyson came to help Travis. It's pretty much all corn and soybeans for uh, what they call the corn run. And uh, starts right after July 10th and we're spraying corn for fungicide by airplane at that time. We've seen a pretty good substantial yield increase um, in, in corn and soybeans from spraying fungicide on, on the corn in July. We have a very short window after uh, flying season is done and harvest season begins, usually the middle part of August to the end of August. Not really a whole lot of downtime there, but it is a little slower as far as field operations go. Being that we're riding along in the combine right now, let's talk about harvest a little bit. To me, the combine is crazy. Just being able to watch this, it's amazing to watch. It's cool to be a part of it and see what's actually happening. But for someone that maybe doesn't get the opportunity to ride in a combine or maybe doesn't even live in an agricultural area, Let's talk about how the combine works and maybe some facts about it, and then we'll go from there. So what the combine does is for corn is takes the ear of corn, uh, takes it off of the plant and shells all of the kernels off of the cob in, as we're going through the field and puts the kernels of corn into a, a, a grain bin in the, in the combine and then discharges all of the unwanted materials such as the corn cob and the husks and the shuck and stalks out the back of the combine. And then we have the kernels of corn to dump into a grain wagon that dumps into a semi-truck and takes it to where it's gonna be dried. 
When the combine is full, how much weight is back there? There's about 25,000 pounds of corn that's in the hopper because our hopper holds about 450 bushel. That's insane. So it's a lot of weight back there. And it does not take long to fill. A question we get all the time with the airplane is, does it fly itself? Now in AGS, there's a lot of automation, but the combine is not run by GPS. It's not as automated. I mean, it's automated as we're going, but can you explain that a little bit? Because you're physically lining the combine up with the rows when we go to turn. Yeah, so when we turn at the end of the field, we are driving the combine manually and uh, we line it up with the rows and there is equipment available for the combine to be able to steer itself down the rows of corn, but it's sensing on the, on the head of the corn where it is down through the rows. We are fortunate we do have that equipment here, which takes a lot of the fatigue out of the operator throughout the day. Uh, so going down through the rows of corn, the combine will steer itself, but it's, it's sensing where it is on the row. It's not GPS based. Something that was really surprising to me is just, I guess the amount of work you can get done in a day with a combine. On average, what would you say you can do acre wise uh, during harvest in a day? Our class eight Case IH combine is running a 12 row uh, Gehring Hoff head, taking 12 rows at a time. And on a good day with no breakdowns, we can usually get somewhere around 100 acres out of that machine. We are running 13 to 16 hour days, but it's just one shift. It's long season for us. On our farm, it usually takes us a full two months to complete harvest if we have a good run. So the corn coming out of our field today is going to our grain storage facility. After we dry it down and store it, it will go to the end user for processing. The moisture count target that we're looking for for long-term storage for corn is 15%. We are able to go to the field around 25 to 27% moisture, drying it in our grain dryer down to uh, for for long-term storage, we're drying it down to 15%. So after harvest, when our grain is stored and dried down, we're watching the markets for demand. When the market tells us to sell corn, we'll sell it and deliver it to market throughout the winter. And obviously we want to be empty by this time next year to start the whole process over. Awesome. I have a couple questions for you. First question, what is the best part about farming? Part of the best part about farming is just the people that you work with. Our crew is, is great. We're very proud of the crew that we have put together. Having family involved is, is always a good thing. And then also carrying on the legacy that your predecessors did in your family, my grandparents and uh, their grandparents and their parents all the way back. And um, it's, it's very rewarding to know that you're carrying on that legacy. And it's also rewarding to know that uh, you're filling a role that the world needs, providing a good food supply that's safe and something that people need throughout the world is food. So it's, it's, a big, it's a big role to fill and um, it's probably the best part about farming is just knowing that you're filling that need. And what's the worst part? You know, there's a lot of long hours. Uh, farming traditionally is, uh, you know, it's, it's a family owned business. So the buck stops with you when you're, when you're the owner of the business you have to be able to solve problems and a lot of times those problems uh, require you spending a lot of time away from uh, your family if you have young kids it's kind of a it's kind of a challenge to uh, have a good family life and and do farming at the same time but um, you know it's it's just part of it's it's just part of uh, the way of life it really is a lifestyle and you have four kids, so, so I forgot to mention that. So, firefighter, uh, farmer, ag pilot, father. Again, I don't know how he sleeps. Yep, my wife is a saint. She she uh, she has to put up with me being gone quite a bit, especially this time of year. Absolutely. Last question for you: If you had one thing to tell the end consumer or someone who may be disconnected to agriculture, um, what would that be? You know, I would encourage uh, those who may not be in agriculture every day to learn about where their food comes from and also learn about uh, commercial farmers and what role they fill, how they fill it. There is a negative narrative out there about uh, commercial corn and soybean production. And um, I would just encourage those who have access to learning about what it's all about, and what role it fills and how it fills it to learn more about it. I think if you learn about what what we do and how we do it um, directly from the source, you'll learn that uh, it fills a very 
a growing role in our world of food supply and it does it in a very sustainable and safe way. That's one thing I think we've really loved by doing this is meeting the, the families behind an operation, um, especially getting to know people like yourself. It's just incredible to see the behind the scenes, get to know people that are in ag and uh, get away from that narrative that there's big ag corporations, nothing's a family farm, that sort of thing. So it's, it's been really awesome to see. We really appreciate you running us through all of this and inviting us into your home. I'm glad you guys could stop by. It was good to see you. Um, you guys have become very good friends to us and we'd like to look forward to the next time you guys can come out and maybe see some planting in action or something. Yeah, that would be awesome. I would love that. Um, all right, well, I'm Callie. This is Travis Herman with Frontier Farms. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and we will get back to you. If we don't know the answer, I'm sure Travis would be willing to help with some of those questions. Thanks again for watching. I would say fly low and fly fast. That's Tyson's thing. I don't know. We got to come up with one for the combine. Mow down some corn. Mow down some corn. You feel good about that? Yeah, I do. Really. Should we do a second take? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>